Welcome, church family. We are glad that you're gathered here with us tonight. I hope you're having a great week, or at least as great as it can be. But being here tonight uh, certainly should uh, lift our spirits. And we're so happy that so many of you have come to join us tonight. Yes. So I hope that you'll take, <laughs> take the opportunity to... to um, be engaged tonight on our chat feature. Uh, that's one way that we can all kind of come together. I know that some of you are listening and not engaging, but let me encourage you to, to at least uh, log in on the chat feature so that we know that you're there. And um, we want to pray for you. We want to be uh, a part of what's going on tonight. And uh, you can uh, join us with that. So as we get started tonight, um, uh, everybody's mind is on the question of when are we going to get back to to normal? When when are we going to reopen? When when are we going to restart? A and um, I'm here to tell you that definitively we don't know. Uh, we are making uh, plans as a staff to uh, as far as how we're going to proceed and launch in that regard. Uh, we don't really know the timing yet. As as you're listening to the information that's coming from uh, the leadership of our, our our president and our governor and mayor, um, you're hearing how they're wrestling with that too. And so we're going to be taking our lead from uh, their advice, from the healthcare professionals, and uh, we're going to try to open up as soon as we can and as safe as we can. It'll be kind of gradual. There'll be incremental openings. And so just continue to to tune in every week, and we'll give you the latest information that we have as we move forward with that. But just continue to pray. That's one thing that we can continue to do, that God will give us wisdom and God will enable us to be able to, to know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. And as we're going through this time, we're trying to provide for you as, as best as we can um, content that'll help you. And I know that we would rather do this in person, but but please take advantage of the um, opportunities that we have. I'm going to ask Pastor Nate to talk a little bit about what we're actually doing for our youth, our children, in our grow groups, because uh, we're doing a lot of different things, and I hope that you'll take advantage of those. Pastor Nate, would you talk about that? Absolutely. Good evening, Faith, and I'm happy to be here with you, as I know uh, these other two fine gentlemen are as well. Uh, so when Pastor was mentioning, we are trying to do a lot for you uh, online and give you as much as we possibly can. And so some of the things we've been doing, uh, just uh, we'll start with with the 252 kids. Uh, we've been sending out um, lesson videos that have been provided to, for us through uh, Orange, uh, the North Point's church. And uh, what they do is they give us some, some lesson videos to send out to the kids. And then we also get to send out some devotional helps for the parents to kind of give them questions to talk through with the kids each week. Uh, and then we've been doing soft touches as well. We've been sending the kids cards, uh, giving them phone calls. We've done a Zoom meeting, plan to do more. Uh, and each week we try to do something different with them just to kind of uh, give them give them that 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 touch that feel that that hey we're here we care and we miss you because it because we do we miss seeing those kids seeing those smiling faces playing on the playground uh filling those classrooms up and just having a good time with the lord and with each other on that note we've been also meeting with the teens uh, i'm very grateful to have brother uh brandon and and miss nikki and, and miss glow who have been uh setting up um 945 classes on Sunday for the teens and doing doing their grow groups for the teens there. And then also we've been meeting as teens on Thursday nights at 6.30 for our uh, weekly time of, of worship, praise, and, and Bible study. And so we've been doing that. And then, of course, the teens are encouraged to join us on 1045 for the, uh, for the, for the adult, uh, well, really for the what would normally be our sanctuary sermons and, and message and worship time. Uh, and so we've been having a good time with that and just keeping in touch with them. Uh, and then we've also been doing a lot with our grow group. So uh, we've been doing um, our, our grow group for the um, younger couples. We've been doing that in the evenings, uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. And then I know Brother Bert's been doing a grow group uh, uh, through Zoom as well. And, and uh, we've been trying to just give you as much as we can, knowing that it's not like Pastor mentioned, it's not what we want. We want to see each other. We want to be around each other. Um, 
but the Lord's given us an opportunity to he'll serve you in this way. And, and so we are trying our best to give you as much as we can and give you as many uh, opportunities to grow in your faith during this time. Uh, so that's what we've been doing online. We look forward to doing a lot more. And of course, you know about the sermons that we have each and every week, uh, whether it be the Good Friday or the regular Sunday. All right. So, uh, Camp, back to you. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And also keep in mind that we are um, um, posting uh, articles on on our web page, on our blog mm. post. And so there'll be different um, information that you can get that will be encouraging and helpful. And right now we're doing a series of testimonies. And uh, I want you to check on it because um, each week we're going to add some new testimonies of different people. And I don't know about you, but I I get excited about people's salvation story because everybody is different. Uh, Some, you know, they come from a very dramatic um, transformation. Others, they come from uh, a family that that was always in church. Uh, It doesn't matter. Um, Everyone that's touched by the grace of Jesus Christ is is indeed a conversion of miracle. And uh, we want to use this as a witnessing tool and I've been amazed just recently at how effective that has been. So uh, I've asked a number of our leadership to do it. I've asked our deacons to be involved and a lot of our church people. And of course, if you watched the sermon last Sunday, uh, I invited everyone in our church to, to take the opportunity and, and share uh, their testimony. So I hope that you'll do that. This is a good opportunity to share our, our, our faith with people who need Jesus and just need some encouragement. Now, next week, we're going to do something. um, We're going to add to this something very different. And I'm going to ask Pastor Will if he'll talk about what we're going to be doing next Wednesday at this time, in addition to our prayer meeting. All right. So basically, we're going to kind of change things up a little bit next week. Um, And really, um, I kind of like to be a little diabolical. And so I propose to the team that next week we kind of add, we're still going to have our time of prayer, um, but next week we're going to add an ask me anything. And by ask me anything, I mean ask Andy anything. And so we want to encourage you. um, I'm going to be taking the time tonight to record, write down the prayer requests that are mentioned in the chat. Um, But I'm also going to take some time. If you have any questions that maybe you'd like us to deal with, we're not going to get to everyone each week, Um, but we'd like to be able to answer some questions and kind of add a little bit of Bible uh, study and conversation time to our Wednesday night program. And so if that's you and you've got a question or you want to try to stump pastor or uh, I really, you know, I want it to feel like his his ordination every single Wednesday night. I want him to feel a little bit of heat. Um, Just just kidding, mostly. (laughs) Um, But anyway, so just uh, leave a question in the comments. You can email us a question. You can write a question on our contact us form on our homepage of our website. Whatever it is, we hope to be able each week to deal with maybe one or two of those questions. Um, And also, like I said, we're going to be recording your prayer requests um, this evening. They're going to come out of the chat and we'll be praying for those throughout the week. Um, But I hope you have a blessed evening. Um, I'll see you at the end and let these two guys take it from here. Guys. All right. Thank you, Pastor Will. Um, We're going to start out tonight um, with our prayer time, and we want to focus on salvation. That is, do you have somebody that you know that's far from God that needs needs the the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, Would you send in that uh, right now, somebody that's on your heart? Maybe it's a, a, a child uh, a, a relative, maybe it's a neighbor, a friend, or coworker. We want to pray specifically for them tonight that God will touch their heart, that the grace of God will reach them. And so, um, I, I, all of us have people that we're that we know of that need the Lord. So, would you take that opportunity in that ch- uh, chat feature to send in those things, and um, and we're going to pray for them in just a moment. And so, if you'll do that. Uh, we would be so grateful because we want to pray for those to be uh, saved. You know, and Pastor Nate, um, prayer can can be effective in reaching people that are lost, can can it? Yes, they, it, it really can be. I mean, um, sometimes we get caught up because we pray once or twice for something and, and it doesn't happen. And so we kind of just leave it to the wayside. 
And the reality of it is, uh, the Lord tells us, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And, and he wants us to keep bringing before him our requests, and especially those people that are on our hearts, our loved ones, our friends, our family, that need to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And he really wants us to continually bring them up and, and to be ready to share when he provides the opportunity, or, and also to pray that he provides other people's opportunity, that, that the right person can be in the right moment when, when God has that heart ready. Amen. And so uh, you never know what God is doing in a person's life. I've always found it remarkable that as you begin to pray for these people, and sometimes, let's, let's be honest, we, we kind of feel like, <laughs> like we're so helpless, like what can we do? Uh, particularly if it's like a, uh, a, uh, my relative or somebody, they can be the hardest ones to witness to. And we just say, man, I, I, I've shared it before, and what can we do? And I'm here to tell you that God can do what we cannot do. He can work in that situations in ways that you haven't even thought of and in ways that you don't even know that he's working in. And so he calls us as his people to, to pray for that, to pray for his hand to move in their life and to trust him and for us to be sensitive to his leadership because, you know, people don't get saved unless we share the gospel. I mean, they're not, they're not going to get saved magically. They get saved because a believer, just like you, took the opportunity to tell them about Jesus Christ. You know, that goes back to our sharing testimonies. One of the most powerful means is just to tell how God reached you. Because, you know, Pastor Nate, when, when we talk about God reaching us, it's a little difficult for people to deny it when they see the transformation, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yes, it is. I mean, it, it, that's the reality. Uh, we always hear the, the maybe the saying, the proof is in the pudding, but it really is when it comes to Christianity. Um, you can tell someone whose heart's been changed by Jesus. They act differently. They live differently. Uh, they love differently. Everything about them um, just just becomes not just different, but better. And the reality of it is that's Jesus inside them. That's not them themselves. That is Jesus inside them working a miracle in their heart. And then it spreads out to others. Amen. All right. Well, I want to thank those of you that are sending in these uh, requests. And we're going to try to take an opportunity to uh, pray for, for them t tonight. Um, if um, uh, Hopefully, we won't miss, miss anybody there. And uh, we're going to later... Um, pray for a couple other categories as well. So um, this is just one category that we feel very important about tonight. So let's go ahead and pray for, for these. And um, um, I'm going to be, as I'm praying, I'm going to be looking at different screens for your prayer requests, because I'm obviously not going to be able to remember all of them. But um, um, let, let me share those here as, as I'm, I'm praying for them. And thank you again for, for, for telling us about them. All right. So, um, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity that we have tonight to pray for these needs and for each person that has submitted them here. I want to thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in response to this prayer. And um, so I lift them up to you tonight. Uh, I pray for, um, um, for uh, John Julian, um, Juliana, that uh, uh, Pastor Nate asked us to pray for. Uh, I lift up to you for salvation, Lord, that you would just reach them. I pray for Liani's sisters, uh, Yolanda and Tamara, that need salvation. Uh, I pray for Teresa Locke's grandson, Shane uh, Cohn. Uh, I lift up to you Sandy Tunning's request to pray for, for uh, her children, uh, Mickey and Am Amy. I uh, pray that um, that you would reach them, that they might get saved. I also pray for Leonie's son-in-law, Kyle, and uh, and for Megan's request for Gerald. Uh, I lift up to you Chris's, Chris Johnson's uh, brother, Bill, that you might reach him. And uh, the Smith family ask us to pray for Kenny and Bill. Kelly wants us to pray for Steve, her husband, Lord, that you might reach his heart. And for Carol, for her friend Laura, Lord, um, we also want to pray for um, uh, 
Jacob's daughter, Christina, uh, this, um, and, um, we want to pray for Sean and, uh, uh, Keel and then for, um, Pat's neighbors, um, Teresa, Anna, uh, Cora, Samira, uh, Nancy and their families. And Gloria wants us to pray for William, Greg, and Hubai, uh, Steve, and Lynn. Uh, Carol uh, wants us to pray for her great nephew, Heath. Uh, the Vasarios want us to pray for Carl's brother, Bob. And then um, Lars and Glow also ask us to pray for their two adult children, Jared and Katie, and also for their neighbors. Father, there are so many um, that, that that are around us, and, and all of us have uh, family that are far from you. And we ask that you might draw them to yourself, Lord. Um, thank you for how you've been using the online content to reach people and uh, use our verbal witness and everything possible, Lord, to draw yourself. And Lord, we thank you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to we're going to transition to to another category. We want you to kind of send it in and Pastor Nate's going to talk about that category and you send in those requests if you would. Uh, so uh, we're going to once again look at uh, people who are who are out of work and just as as the Lord lays someone on your heart that, that you want us to pray for, please by all means put them in the chat screen. But we all know the importance of trying to provide for your family or just even if it's just for yourself. I mean, you, you, you want to be able to provide food and clothing and, and, and a place to stay, shelter. Those necessities are just always on our minds and our hearts. And, and so for some people, when that opportunity is taken away from them because they lose their job or, or, or they just uh, they're laid off for a bit or their hours are reduced, it greatly impacts uh, not not just their ability to do that, but also really how they feel about themselves. Um, you you, you kind of get a feeling like like a, a bit of a depression that can sink in. And so we really want to cover these people in prayer that the Lord will take care of them during this time and that he'll put some people in their path that can help meet their needs while they're looking for that next job and that he'll also provide them that next job or the ability to return to their current job, whatever it might be. Uh, but, but we really want to cover them in prayer. And, and, and anything you wanted to add to that, Pastor? No, um, just, you know, and there may be some of you or some people in our church. In fact, I know some families that 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 uh, their jobs have been furloughed because of the, um, the the virus and stuff. And let me tell you, uh, for, for a lot of us, if we had to go more than a couple of weeks without without a paycheck, uh, things would be very, very difficult so um, you can only imagine, um, in some cases, how critical that is. So maybe you know somebody, um, uh, a friend, maybe a coworker, maybe somebody where you work that got laid off, or or maybe somebody um, in our church. And certainly, we'd like to uh, to know about it. If so, uh, that we can pray for them, and we can um, trust the Lord will meet those needs. Um, as long as this continues to go on, and w- again, we don't know how long, uh, just kind of think about the hardship that is on some people because they don't have that income. Um, and then beyond just the people that Pastor Nate talked about, uh, a lot of the small businesses are really yeah. struggling because a lot of times they're kind of a family business. And, you know, if you don't have any customers, you know, have any money coming in, And uh, it's a lot like most places. You still have rent that you've got to pay and insurance. And I mean, there's still cost, even though you're not bringing in any revenue. And so you can imagine that's hard for them. Imagine how hard it is on people. And so um, if you've got people like that, um, that we can pray for, we would uh, welcome you to share uh, for them. And um, Pastor Nate's going to pray for them in just a second. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, keep them coming in. And if we miss anyone, as I'm praying, by all means, we we will get back to them. Uh, we'll also we look over this and make sure by the end of, at the end of each session that, that we've covered everyone in prayer that it was requested for. So if we miss someone during this time, uh, don't think that we're going to neglect them. We we are going to do our due diligence to make sure they are prayed over and prayed for. Uh, I'll lead us in a time of prayer for this particular subject. 
and then, then then we'll move on. Heavenly Father, I thank you very much for this evening, and I thank you for these uh, wonderful souls, Father, that that have joined us online tonight to lift their requests and their burdens before you, because they know you care. And Father, right now I just I, I think of Chris's former coworker Diana. I beg of you, Father, to please, please be with her during this time. Uh, help her to be able to provide for herself, for her family, whatever her needs may be, Father. Meet them during this time. Allow others, Father, to be a, a help and a benefit to her, Father, and for her uh, potentially to meet Jesus during this time because of it. Father, I also ask you to just keep her future needs in, in mind and to, uh, to allow her, Father, to find uh, a, a place of employment, a place of work where, where she can once again earn what she needs to. Father, I think of this also for uh, Kelly Ellington's friend, Jackie, Father, who's out of work, and she's 12 weeks pregnant. And she's probably got a lot on her mind right now, Father, and so I beg of you to, to meet those needs, but also just, Father, to be able to give her a, a peace that she really can't understand that comes from you, Father, that, that can help her get through this, help her not to have to stress every day, provide her some moments of relief, Father, uh, just, just that she can enjoy the life that you've given her and blessed her with. And Father, I just beg of you to provide her with her needs during this time, and also if, if is your will uh, another job to help her during this time, Father. Father, I think of um, uh, Bert and Pat's daughter Denise, Father, and just ask you to be with with her, Father, be with her. She's also uh, lost her job, and I ask you, Father, uh, to just provide for their family, provide for her, uh, allow her, Father, to find something else swiftly, and just help her to get back on on that on her feet in that regards father father i think of uh heather mckinley that that liani has mentioned father and I just ask you very much to, to be in her situation as well father to look out for to take care of her father uh, to have some people in her life that can look out for her as well and just uh, father provide her needs but also allow her to get a job again father just be able to return to the workforce Father, I know there's probably many who have not been mentioned tonight, and so I ask of you, Father, to be with those those who are out of work, those small businesses who are hurting deeply, Father, because of the lack of clientele, customer base, Father. Uh, just I ask you, Father, to meet these people's needs and allow this time to be an opportunity uh, for those of us who can support them to support them in, in, in any ways we can, whether it's buying a, a burger or a hot dog from the vendor, Father, or or uh, just helping bring someone some groceries that's out of a job, whatever it might be, Father, touch our hearts and lead us in the right path so that we can help as well. Uh, Father, I also ask you to open up opportunities for us to share Jesus with them. In Jesus' precious and heavenly name, we ask this. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to take a few moments just before we go to um, our our final prayer time. And we want to invite you to, to share with us what's going on with you. What's happening in your life? Go ahead and send a chat to us. And let us know. Are you still going to work? Uh, is the uh, is you being sequestered? Is that driving you crazy? Uh, have you have you you know walked fifty miles to? Uh, what's going on with what's going on in your life that that we can uh, just kind of share? It's just interesting to kind of find out what's going on. In that, and so if you'll go ahead and share that with us, we'll read that off to people and and talk about it for just a moment. I, I can tell you that that as pastors, we have been really busy trying to contact people, uh, phone calls, text messages, um, Zoom. I mean, we're just we're 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 doing that. Um, I wish we could be in in person. So tell us, come on, sh share with us a little bit of what you are are doing in your life. What's going on? with uh with you um how many of you are still working are, are have you found any recreation that you can do um i know they just recently um opened up the beaches and so maybe you took a walk there yeah have you done that yet nate <laughs> no no not the beach uh, i've been i've been doing home renovation so we've actually got to paint and floor three of the bedrooms during this time so it's Part of it's been fun. Uh, part of most of it's been a lot of work, <laughs> uh, but it has been enjoyable. Uh, Teresa and I've got to spend some time together doing that, just throwing some floors in and painting the walls, and, and uh, just uh, make making some transformations happen at the house. <laughs> 
Uh, maybe that's what you're doing. Maybe you're getting caught up with your um, honey-do list or yard work or something. Maybe you're taking on a project or whatever. Um, let us know. Let's say Ronnie says he's been getting lots done around the house. Uh, all right. So uh, is Melba happy with that, Ron? We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Vicky's been rolling around the neighborhood talking to everyone. Uh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> um, Pat wants to go fishing. So, so Bert, you gonna take her fishing? I don't know. Can can you do that? <laughs> I don't know if they restricted you on that. Yeah, I'm but Ronnie says she's happy. Take Bert, take that girl huh? fishing, man. Take that girl fishing. <laughs> 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 yeah well nice kelly, see, kelly get that housework yeah. done yeah. <laughs> yeah wait are you telling me kennedy's not helping you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what else is going on folks uh, we got both chats on live and Facebook, and we get a lot from you on live. You Facebook people haven't said much, so l let us know what you're doing. I mean, there's a you know lot that you can be doing. Maybe that's not what you want to do. <laughs> I've been talking to some of the members, and you know they're just their their whole norm, their whole routine has just kind of gotten changed. So uh, we get that. <laughs> Uh, nice right, well, making some blankets for the babies at the hospital that's pretty cool wow. megan's been working a lot <laughs> <laughs> but I, I heard megan you got some new bicycles and so you finally made will get some exercise <laughs> so, <laughs> did we did we really have to bring that up right now really <laughs> hey people want to know <laughs> So Pat, hey, there's nothing wrong with Candy Crush Lane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Pat, the ramps may be closed, but the Rivertown Pier and Park is still open. So if you don't mind fishing from the shore, you can fish from there. And uh, <laughs> Vicky too, um, I got your message, and I really appreciate that, Vicky. You really encouraged me today, and I just want to say thank you, thank you. I was going to call you back, got busy. Um, but publicly, I just want to say thank you. That was a real big encouragement to me and a blessing. Oh, look at that. Ron's helping Bert out. <laughs> what a friend. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to find a way for Pat to go fishing. My goodness. <laughs> the only question is, does she have her crickets? <laughs> <laughs> Need to order them, Bert. <laughs> Make her happy. <laughs> uh, all right. Ah, we're purging a lot of stuff, huh? Glow, making Lars uh, do some work. That's, <laughs> that's always good. <laughs> Nate is a fan of your purging. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Scrabble, that's good. Scrabble, huh? All right, see, see you're helping people out, Teresa, helping Carolyn out with her groceries. That's pretty good. Yeah. Dang, doctor's appointments. Man, you're staying busy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you this week, I got a text from uh, Sue Smith, and she was making some masks at home. And uh, they're, she, they're kind that are treated with a special microbial treatment and um she, she dropped off a, a couple at the house i just thought that was was wonderful for for her to do that um, nice may come in handy so so I'm glad she's thinking of us um yeah i did ask her i did ask her if um if there was a cost for that and she said well no her pastor had encouraged them to do something nice for their neighbors Mm -hmm. And I thought, who does that? <laughs> and you benefited. You benefited. I, I did. I did. I'm thinking, who, who does that? Anyway, I'm glad. So, so good going, Sue. Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and how many of you are tired of cooking your own meals? 
Oh, I'm so tired of cooking my own meals. <laughs> <laughs> so weary. I've spent hours laboring in the kitchen cooking my own meals. Mm. Megan's not yeah. watching this anymore. Megan, right? can you confirm this? <laughs> <laughs> we know better than that. <laughs> we know that if Megan didn't bring Will his food, he would starve. <laughs> 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 I'd lose a lot of weight. Let's go. Let's start there. I'm well taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> this, this video has been sponsored Carisha's by thinking about cleaning. Coke. <laughs> Coke. Carisha's thinking about cleaning out her garage. Yeah. Man. Uh, you're, welcome, you're welcome to come over and clean mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're at church. Stop lying. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> Outback, Outback does have pickup. pickup. Technically, I'm at my house. <laughs> yeah, so but few of us have sensor. food trucks. So the auto sense. So if you're on live, they just added a auto sensor, and I'm seeing that it's sen censored potty, and I'm seeing that it's censored <laughs> Pat's pot. So <laughs> that's good to know that it censors even words like that. Y'all potty mouths in here. My goodness gracious. <laughs> now the question, is, the question is, will it mute me or not? Yeah, I don't so know. I said potty and pot. Mm. Mm. We don't get taken you have down, to, right? you have to, Well, you have to chat it, right? I don't think it does it audibly. Right. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We could get taken down because I said potty and pot. Good. We'll find we'll out. Find we'll out. See. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for, for the banter. Man, we enjoyed that. Um, let's go ahead to our last category, and it's kind of a general one. And some of you have already submitted some. I'm going to mention a few of them just to remind us of that. And then, Pastor Nate, you pick up any that you see and then lead sure. us in a time for, for – for prayer. I know that earlier uh, Michael Durrett asked us to pray for uh, encouragement for, uh, uh, I think her name is Marlene or, or Marilyn. Um, she is, um, needs encouragement. She's uh, 95 years old and her son has uh, liver cancer. So we want to pray for them. Um, let's see. And then. Um, if you see any night, just jump in. Yeah, I'm scrolling back through. It was Aunt Marie, by the way. Oh, Aunt, Marie. Aunt Marie, all right. I couldn't Aunt read Marie, my okay. <laughs> I'll Let's go back see. to my uh, Pat asked us to pray <laughs> for the Ed Carlo family. Ed uh, Carlo family, okay. Yeah, he he passed away, and we'll pray for the, for them. And of course, and, we'll um, we'll mention uh, the the Halls family again. Anne's mom, Kathy, uh, passed away. We pray for yeah. Jean and and all the family there. Then, and then uh, we've uh, got Tom still recovering. We got Bill Crane um, with his issues and with his health. Um, and also, it looks like uh, Sarah from, from GLOW was sent home from work today to be tested for the corona. Mm. Yeah. And All right, just, just keep them coming in. Um, I, I'm going to start praying, but uh, I'll keep my eyes open as I'm praying. So if you have some, some stuff you want to add to it, by all means do. And like I said, we will go back over this if we miss anything. We'll, we will try to make sure we cover anyone in prayer that everyone that we can, really. Yeah. The Vasarios want to pray for their daughter, Michelle, to sell their house. Okay. Okay. And for Cheryl. Uh, Kelly asked us to pray for Cheryl Schuster and her family for her, yes. for Jenny's passing. So. All right. I see that, Megan. I'll, I'll pray for that as well. All right. Here we go. And if I miss anyone, Pastor, you just pick it up and continue on and cover me. <laughs> okay. 
Heavenly Father, we, we come before you again and just with grateful hearts and open arms and just beg of you to hear our requests. Uh, Father, we just think of all these that have been brought before us, Father. And, and as, as we go through them, I ask you to cover these people in prayer, Father. And I just I ask you now, Father, just to please be uh, be, be with the Hall family. Uh, just just be with them, Father, as, as Anne has lost her mom. Her mom has gone home with the Lord. And we're grateful for that, Father. But we also ask you to be with Gene during this time. Comfort him, comfort the family during this loss, Father. And just just please be with them, Father, as, as I know it's going to make their hearts hurt. And it's going to just, just cause some some pain there, Father. So I ask you to encourage them, to be with them, strengthen them during this time. Just use it as an opportunity to reach Gene as well. And, and Father, I just ask you also to uh, to be with Ed Carlos' family, Father, uh, as he has also passed away. Uh, friends, Father, of Bert and Pat, I just ask you to be with them. Father, comfort them during this time. Cover them. And we just thank you, Father, for, for your mercies towards us as, as we go through these, these moments. Father, I just uh, ask you to please be uh, with with um, excuse me, with Sarah, Father, Miss Glow's um, relation there, Father. I ask you to be with her. She's been sent home from work today to be tested for the coronavirus. And I ask you, Father, that she does not have it. Uh, but if for whatever reason you've allowed it to happen, she does have it, Father, for her to um, recover swiftly from it to get through it, Father. And, and we also just uh, we, we thank you, Father, also uh, for just the praise from, from Megan that Fanny's family with the COVID are all doing better. We ask you to continue to be with them, Father. Uh, I also ask you to uh, praise you for my own family, for my mom recovering from it. And uh, she's doing much better now, Father. My dad is almost fully recovered. I ask you to be with them as well. Continue to give them the strength they need as they as they uh, heal back up from it. Father, we think of those who've been going through some major surgeries lately, and we think of uh, Brother Bill, Father, and just ask you to continue to be with him during the healing processes. There seems to be even more things now that need to be taken care of, and, and we we thank you for bringing him through uh, just, just the main surgery. But I ask you, Father, now all these other little things seem to pop up that, that you'll move into that situation and take care of him, help him to recover swiftly, to regain his strength, Father, and for the doctor to be able to take care of these other issues that have popped up, Father. Father, we just think of uh, uh, Tom and Sandy Hartley, and we ask you to be with them, continue to help Tom to recover, to grow stronger, Father. We thank you for all the blessings you've provided there, just bringing him through the surgery, allowing it all to take. We ask you now to just continue to move in that area, Father, continue to heal and to be with them, and just uh, be with Sandy too, Father, as she cares for Tom and takes care of him. We just thank you, Father, for them and, and just for their willingness to work uh, with each other, to trust you. And Father, I just uh, I ask you also just to uh, pl please um, be with the Verasaro's daughter Michelle. Father, she's trying to sell her house. I ask you, Father, to just uh, allow that opportunity to to present itself and then be able to sell it, Father, for for a, a good market value, be able to move to where you have you have moved them to, Father, to find a home for their family again. And Father, I also ask you to be with uh, Cheryl. And just uh, come for her during this time, Father. She has lost her mom. Uh, Father, just uh, help them out as they as they have to uh, not just deal with the grief, but also, Father, just um, helping out uh, Jim, Father, through this time as well. Uh, be with him, Father, and just comfort him during this time. Comfort all of them, Father. Father, we uh, thank you again for this evening. And if there's anyone. Else if there's anyone I've missed, I, I ask you to forgive me and just be with them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank everyone for joining us tonight. I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Remember to turn in Sunday at our broadcast at 1045, and uh, let's worship together. Come back next week, and may the Lord be with you. Bye. We're praying for you.